Well, the funny thing that I used to say, we and we used to say this in the clubs a lot, that what's the what is that what is a comedian, uh, what is it, what does a comedian and a drug dealer have in common? What's right? that? They both crack each other up. Office hours. I said, you know, who's up, who's hot right now, who's coming up? And so uh, this uh, your name came up and we're ha- happy to have you down here. Do you uh can I get you something to drink? Can I make you something? Uh, this is tequila. This is yeah. Milagro. I'll just drink with it. So you drink. Yes. You, not one of these pussies who doesn't, uh, you can't have a drink. That's correct. Ice? I, oh yeah, please. Um, a little lime? Sure. Yeah, whatever you recommend here. This is, um, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, this is a, a good opportunity for me. And, um. Well, listen, I mean, nowadays, when I was, you know, coming up, it was all about getting onto certain talk shows that we won't mention. But why? Um, why won't you mention? Well, because it's all a, a, it's all a fucking joke. It's all a rat race. What I'm saying is now a young guy like you uh, needs to do this kind of shit. Needs to do these kind of shows. This kind of ad, this kind of loose format because it's a lot easier to get a fucking vibe off of somebody. Uh, here, then if I if then you know p- putting you in, up on a mic and having you do five minutes, of what you think is your best shit? Okay, it sounds like it would be basically the same. Whether we were, it's not which... the same, and you're under the illusion. Do you care if I fucking smoke, or are you gonna? Hell no, I don't. I think I, I'm the kind of guy who cares about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to smoke? I mean, listen, those I, are clove cigarettes. I'll try it. I'll try, yeah, and, uh, I'll try that stuff. Finally, some fucking balls on, on somebody here. So you're like um, a millennial comedian, right? One second. Uh, fucking guy hasn't smoked before. <sighs> yes, I was born between the years of 1980 and 2000. <sighs> you hold this in or no? You can. I do. Okay. Yeah, because I'm looking. I'll, I pick comedians' brains, like older guys. You know? Oh, right, 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 right. So well, that's, smart. that's the kind of question I would ask. I'd mm-hmm. say, oh, do you hold this in or in how long? I follow up. Well, I mean, listen, the, the whole thing with your generation, it feels like you have to, like, tiptoe around so many subjects. Okay. Like, you can't really... Like you probably, I mean, my guess is you probably can't, I don't know what you believe. I don't know what your point of view is on fucking anything. So you haven't seen anything. I haven't seen shit, but that's okay. I mean, the point I'm saying is, and I bet even if I did, I wouldn't get a sense of the way, the way you really think, because I'm guessing that you're, uh, that, that because of your age and because of the climate we're in and the environment we're in, that you don't necessarily feel safe speaking your mind. You, it is what it is. Like, I can't change the fact of when I was born, I was born in 1976, mm-hmm. right? That makes me Gen X. Right. Right? So you you come in with uh, a whole different set of values, a different set of perspectives uh, that I can or might, I can or cannot, depending on what they are, connect with. So you want to watch, you'll watch my stuff. I used to have a fucking ashtray in here and the fucking cleaning lady got rid of it. You can use this shit. She got rid of it? Well, I don't know. She was probably in the fucking dishwasher. Speaking of which, I have a um, melee um, a range, right? A range? Like a stove? An oven a stove. and a stove. Okay. A fucking range. Okay. And uh, got this sucker 6000 bucks three years ago. Digital display on the fucker... Uh, craps out. It's, it says, you know, it's just a bunch of numbers and backwards, like if someone took a hammer to it, right? Right. Bring the guy over and um, fucking uh, 1200 bucks to fix the, the display. Or if that doesn't work, six, uh, three, three, three K to replace uh, that whole unit. In other words, they have to bring the whole thing out, take the whole thing out and replace it. So, my point is that the shit that they sell now, even though they're putting a t- top line price tag on it, six grand for a goddamn 
uh, range. Right. Three three years later, the fucking digital display goes out. It's a bigger. It's it. For example, do you, do you have a car? Yes. Okay. I live in Los well, Angeles. Is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> you, you've you heard me say that. That's fucking funny. You don't I know mean, my, any of my stuff, I guess. No, I guess not. But I want to. I want to get to know you, and that's why you're here. So, uh, what kind of car do you have? Um, I am currently driving a Volkswagen. See, now there's a fucking car. That's really? a German car, and they knew how to make cars. But yes. you know the backstory with that shit. Of course, my last name is a, a city in Germany. Is this? Yeah, you smoke these. I'm smoking them right now. I, mean, I don't know. When are I'm you not do here? need a pair of glasses? Because I'm obviously smoking. <laughs> that them was right actually a decent now. joke right there. <laughs> do I need a pair? Because I, I yeah. am feeling a little insecure right now. You well, have... you shouldn't, man. This is like you know. Uh, first of all, as a comedian, you should have thicker skin. See, this is this is what drives me crazy, and it's it's sort of a. Um, It's endemic of the, your generation. Is Pandemic? Endemic. Okay. Endemic. Look it up. You have th- now three times I've asked you for one of your jokes. And instead of telling me one of your jokes, you sidestep and, and tell me some, you know, you go into your own personal no, psychology I, bullshit. I asked you to set me up properly, which was you were supposed to mention grocery stores or food. Or- okay. Um, let's do it that way. It's, you're an interesting guy. I mean, you know, you're a generation, uh, I think, and and mine. I'm, and I'm not, listen, I'm not just going to throw this all on you. I mean, the, what's happening now is with uh, Instacart and Amazon and Postmates and Uber, people aren't going to the fucking grocery store. You know, I mean, it's just not happening. So where, 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 how do you even work in grocery store material? Does anybody even fucking relate to it? Um, yes, there is a significant market of individuals who go to grocery stores still. Then tell me about your, tell me about your experiences uh, at grocery stores. Okay, I'll just hop in. Um, I was at the grocery store the other day, and. Uh, common everyone should relate okay and uh i saw a guy and he was buying just one grape right just one grape okay what bullshit no i i just i i'm a guy (laughs) that wasn't it (laughs) no well i know but i'm stopping you because i don't tolerate it i (laughs) this is insane no it's not and i'm trying to help you here because that didn't happen (laughs) you First of all, you know comedians will lie, right? A or fucking you... course. Yes. I mean, that's part of the game. But so you yeah, have to sell it better because it, it's just too hard to swallow. And that's actually a funny joke when it comes to grapes. Too hard to swallow. But That's actually not that um, hard to swallow. Swallow a fucking grape. I want to see it. It depends on the size of the grape. I would just pick up one of the smaller right, listen, bunch. I, I've been doing this 30 years. I'm trying to tell you something. You... You have to present a premise that somebody is going to believe for the joke to work. So one grape. You see a fucking guy buy one yes. grape. Let go ahead. Okay. Where? So, Ralph's? Yes. So you get specific. I was at Ralph's. Now, if people at home don't know what Ralph's is, Ralph's is a supermarket in Los Angeles, and I'm sure elsewhere outside of in the California area. You know, you might want to think about making it more universal. You could say something like, I was in Safeway. There's a lot more Safeways. But let's do Ralph's. Okay. <clears throat> I was at Ralph's, and I saw somebody who was trying to buy uh, just one grape. One grape, I thought. Who, who does that? You know, why go through the hassle of buying one grape? Why not just try to buy the bunch and save yourself a trip? Right. Yeah, I mean, Why? yeah, that was it. So, yeah. well, it, you know, you you you've uh, you've got the performance, you've got the sort of performative aspect of it. Yeah, I was happening. leaning forward here. Yeah, and you're you're we're kind of going through the process of of uh, you, we're experiencing it through you. So that was, you actually did like that. I don't think it's a fucking funny joke. You know, you know when Kaufman and and people like that were were. Well, there's a condescending quality to it, 
you know, because, you know, there, there's sometimes there's just a simple joke, right? You know, like, uh, you know, like, why did the sailboat start doing drugs? Why? Uh, peer pressure, right? I mean, that, yeah. You're not laughing? No, I mean, but I, big, I'm not laughing because I've heard it about a fucking million times, but it's a funny joke and it's, um, it's not, it doesn't require you to have a fucking PhD in metaphysics or whatever to get it, you know? I Last mean, time I checked, grapes are just a simple food product. Right, right. But it's not about the grapes, man. You know, it's not about the grapes. It's about sort of this like uh, meta shit where it's so not funny that it becomes funny or something. Yeah, it's know? so bad that it's good. Yeah, which, uh, which is, there's, there's no time for that shit anymore. Um, but I want to understand your generation. Everything, uh, at this, you know, everything seems impossible for you to for your generation. Uh, uh, and at the same time, uh, you don't give a shit. Is that fair? Um, I, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Do, do you do you know that there was a time when there wasn't? Um, a million channels on TV and that there was a time when you, you know, you couldn't just at the, with a, with a flick of an app, summon someone to pick you up and take you wherever you wanted to go. Like you're a fucking Roman emperor. Yeah. I mean, I've heard about the past. Yes. Do you know that there was a time when you couldn't just, you had to literally go into a room, take a thing, which is called a phone, whatever's in your pocket right now, it's not a phone. You take it off the wall Press buttons and wait and hope to fucking hell that the person you're trying to call happens to be in the location that you're calling. Yeah. And it drives me up the fucking wall to hear people like you and your generation, not to put it, not to spe spe specify you, but uh, to hear you bitch and moan and complain about how the world is coming to an end because of common cold and that the ice caps are melting and that uh you that the, the 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 person in charge isn't who you the perfect person uh and uh, and and yet you you live in this fantasy land where the you know that if things aren't exactly you're like the princess and the fucking pea you know the princess and the fucking pea mm -hmm. with the mattresses and she's sleeping on 20 fucking mattresses and she can't sleep because there's a P, 10 mattresses down. Yeah, I know that. So yeah. I know. That's that that's all I hear from you people. And and you better grow up because that's not uh that's not how that's not how the world works, friend. From the podcast studio, we brought you Return to Sender, No Dice, a history of gambling and gaming in America is out now on all podcast platforms. This 20-episode podcast tells the story of cards, dice, and slots, and how it changed the history of the United States. From gambling Jack Cody, to the mob bosses in Las Vegas, to the current multi-billion dollar online gaming industry, host Linda Garrity breaks it all down for you. This is the only history of gaming and gambling podcast available, so sign up now and learn about this untold story. So where do you like to do, uh, like, are you doing clubs? Are you doing, like, uh, alternative spaces? Or, what, like, where do you, uh, where, where do people come and see you? Um, yeah, I, I, I tour. I, um, I spend a lot of time in clubs. And how's, how's your, uh, how would you rate your, um, the reaction you get from the audience? Is, is it, is it, does it enforce reinforce the idea that you belong in this field or is it uh, is it is it a struggle and a challenge um i would say uh it depends yes i occasionally uh as i'm sure you're aware some comedians have off nights we can't be on 24 7 um every comedian bombs and there's no shame in that and i don't yeah, I I don't I shouldn't feel like I have to defend myself for for bombing. You know, this reminds me of the um the the cop, right? Going back to the drugs thing, okay. the cop that that uh, had one of those bomb uh, drug sniffing dogs, mm -hmm. and uh, guy goes a uh, cop goes up to a guy, and he says, 
my dog says that you you're, that you're on drugs, mm -hmm. and the guy says uh, I'm on drugs. You're the one talking to a fucking dog. Right. I mean, you know that shit. You you drop that on the mic in one of these clubs you're doing, and then you'll see a different energy in the room. Different. Okay. <clears throat> What was it like for you growing up? What was the uh, what was the thing? Well, I'll say this: I could not wait to get out of my cookie cutter town and move to Los Angeles. It was rough. Uh, I mean, I'm, as a comedian, obviously, my mind was not on the same page as most of the citizens of my town, so. Yes, I feel much more comfortable in Los Angeles, aside from most of today. I'm going to try to diffuse the situation, however. I'm going to present you with what I brought, and... Uh, what the fuck is this? It's a gift, and I just honestly think this could help the situation we're going through. I don't think there's a situation. I'm just being real with you, and uh, if you can't handle that, then... But I understand you have, uh, you know... Um, Facts don't care about feelings, my friend, if you know that expression, and I think you better get used to it. This, this is, a di what the hell? Admit it, life would be boring without me. Without who, you? <laughs> this is like an ironic, folks, we have an ironic t-shirt. <laughs> it's very funny. <sighs> you don't find that funny? I don't fucking find it funny. I think it's, uh, I think it's the problem with, you know, this... Meta, uh, ironic, detached, nothing fucking matters, I don't give a shit, uh, attitude that, listen, you know, there's real fucking problems out there. And I think when you come to terms with that, suddenly, like magic, you don't have the time or the energy to dick around, okay? And maybe you should look around and say, my free speech is being censored. I'm not allowed to do my job. Uh, people have lost their sense of humor because you can't tell a joke anymore without getting tied up to a pole and burned at the fucking stake. I've never had that experience. No, you haven't because you play it safe and you don't push any buttons and you don't challenge anybody. You fucking dick around with shit like this. I'm not your dad. I'm not your mommy. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to be straight with you. Where the fuck are my clothes? I mean, they were fucking went. I mean, I don't know where the fuck they went. I can't keep going without the cloves. You're addicted? Uh, yeah, that's what they do. Uh, yeah, they're falling under here. Oh, shit. You want, I found this. No, I can't go on without my clothes. Just a cigarette. Well, we should, we gotta find him anyway. <clears throat> Here they are. Okay. Anyway. Oh. Get my show dates up. I'm going to be at the uh, Whirling Tiger in Louisville, Kentucky, August 17th. 
the uh, August 18th City Winery in Nashville, the pageant on August 19th, and that's in St. Louis, August 20th, Egyptian Room at the Old National Center in Indianapolis, uh, Turner Ballroom in Milwaukee, the Admiral Theater on August 23rd in Omaha, um, Tower Theater, Oklahoma City, and uh, that's the end of that. Anyway, so where are you going to be um, next? Um, thank you. That's a good question. Thank you very much for asking. I'm actually going to the Northeast. <laughs> I'll be in the Northeast in early August and a little bit of the Midwest. That includes Boston, New York, Pittsburgh, Detroit. Pittsburgh? Is that weird? Well, I mean, uh, that's a club. That's uh, that's club comic territory. I don't oh. know how the, if they have I, I, you know alternative comedy there. I've already said I'm not affiliated with alternative comedy. That's not how I define myself. You did not say that. Yes, I did. I that said did I, not. We can watch the fucking tape, man. And there's no point in which you identified yourself as anything but um, a stand-up comedian. And I said I spend time. I spent a significant amount of my time at clubs. Yeah, but you did not clarify that you are not an alternative comedian. Can you pass the light? Jesus Christ, I'm your fucking valet all of a sudden. Can I get you a martini and a, a fucking lobster thermidor for fuck's sake? You know, Robin Williams, uh, who I knew, started in theater and was a Shakespearean actor, actually, and um, only really found comedy later uh, as he went to San Francisco and got in with this uh, scene in San Francisco. And I think there's interesting value found there because I think a guy like him with all that energy there was still this tremendous talent at the core of it. And I think it's important that if you're going to do this and if you're going to take this shit seriously, that there is a foundation. Uh, I don't give a shit if it's Shakespeare, but it's got to be something. Where, what, what, what was your foundation? What, where did, what do you have at the core that this is coming, where this is, you feel like you're on firm ground? For me, a lot of it started at university. Uh, I went to... But that's a lot of guys, right? I mean, there are a lot of guys who go to college, they think they know everything. Class, yes. Yeah, and they, class and they think that they're the funniest fucking guy on campus. And then they go up and they have nothing to say. And they have nothing to offer. I have a lot to say. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I haven't heard one thing that, is, that has made me think, hmm... And it sure as fuck hasn't made me laugh. That's probably because you're currently in the role of interviewer. I bet if you watch this video later and you see it at home, you're going to laugh. See, what you are is a, a manipulator. And you've taken this, this opportunity and you've squandered it because you are treating this like the it's the fucking inquisition instead of rolling with it and actually having fun because this could have been a lot this could this could have been a lot of fun yeah but it hasn't been and i don't think it's been fun for you you know and the one thing one of the the mottos here is we uh we don't we, we live in the moment, and we don't act like uh, fucking grass is green. That's actually the, good. I do yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm not— I'm I say not, be in the moment. No, well, that's where you get—there's that. There's a big difference, okay? Because be in the moment is passive bullshit, and it is—it's it's, uh, you're, you're, you, a way to make an excuse for your behavior, whereas living in the moment is an active experience. You see the difference between passivity— and activity, mm -hmm. be in the moment is it's somebody else's problem. Live in the moment is I'm making a choice. And we are in, this is the moment we're in. And you're making choices in real time. 
I'm making choices in real time. I'm being honest with you. And, and it's, it's typical of, of people like you, uh, your demographic, I'll put it that way. Millennial? That and some is that you think you know everything and you think you've got all the answers. And when push comes to shove, you're going to be flat on your fucking face because the world don't work like that, sunshine. Okay. You know, yeah. and I, I could have, you know, I got enough. I got, I don't have time for this shit because I don't have enough. I, I have enough money where I could say, fuck it. And don't do another fucking thing with my life and sit around and jerk off and, you know, eat whatever I want. But that's not <laughs> my scene. I want to, uh, I'm in this to win it. I'm in this to, to do, uh, good for what, I, what the, 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 the life that I've chosen, which is to entertain and to be a, a mentor and a guide to people who take this shit seriously. And when you come into my space and disrespect it, then you're going to be treated the same. You're going to be treated like a dog. But I just resent the fact that you come in here acting like you know everything and that you are, are holier than thou and that nothing that you've ever done uh, has gotten close to being wrong. Uh, and you haven't said one thing that's fucking funny. Say something funny. Say something that's going to make somebody laugh. Okay. Um, so uh, we can talk about technology, if that's all right with you. Yeah. That's something that we can all relate to. Um, I feel like, I don't know if you feel like technology is getting out of control today. Um, I honestly can't keep up with it. I, uh, I got a smartwatch the other day, right? And I, I feel like an effing idiot wearing it, right? I, I keep talking to my wrist like I'm in a science fiction movie. Like, I'm like, uh, uh, computer, open the pod bay doors, please. And it's just me and my wrist staring at each other. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get the sentiment because there are a lot of fucking people with so eye like watches. That. You actually get, like, I get the I get where you're coming from and uh you know, I think it's it's more of a it's more of a uh observation than traditional setup punchline. It's it, it's definitely got some potential. Thank you. Yeah, okay. But, you know, um, is it going to show, are you going to get an hour out of it? That's the goal. Out of that? I mean, I'm working on an hour. I don't mm -hmm. know if I can get an hour out of that one joke. No, I, will, I didn't say that. You're saying, will I be qualified to? Well, is that the path you're going to take to, I mean, if that's all you have, then, pal, I'd go back to the small town in Northern California and try to figure something else out. But if there's more, I'd love to hear it. Um, okay. Well, continuing on the topic of uh, continuing on the topic of technology, social media is weird. I feel like uh, you probably agree with that. Well, let me get. Don't get me started on that. Yeah. Because I think it's rotting everyone's okay. brains. Well, let me do this, please. Um, have you ever noticed that people on social media always post the best versions of themselves? Right. Well, that's true because I think that there is this tendency to, uh, it, it's like you're back in fucking high school and suddenly it's a popularity contest. Right. That's where I'm going with this. So have you ever noticed how people post the best versions of themselves on social media? Yeah, I do. Okay. Like when was the last time you ever saw someone post a selfie with a zit or a bad hair day. Well, there's the shit with, um, like on, uh, what's that, Pimple Popper show, where they see people posting shit about that. Right, okay. Which is so, sort of like, how did that get so popular that people are watching people fucking pop zits? I mean, re reality TV has is, is gotten so out of control where you have people now 
I don't know. Ne what's next? You're going to have the fucking Dr. Kravorkian hour uh, where you're going to watch people doing, you know, assisted suicide because the because uh, c because it does well in the fucking ratings. Like, when was the last time you saw someone post a selfie with a zit or a bad hair day? Never. That's when. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> social media is... Uh, yeah, social media... Um, oh, and have you ever tried to explain to your grandparent what a TikTok is? That's like trying to teach a my, foreign... Listen, my grandparents uh, are not with us anymore. And I can tell you one thing, that my grandfather, who fought in World War fucking II, uh, and worked a, a crane, uh, was a crane operator, union guy, uh, they call a Roosevelt Democrat, who switched parties in 1980 because the Democrats had... Um, Given up on people like him. Uh, if he saw the world today, he wouldn't recognize it. Okay. Um, can I? I'll just continue though. Uh, but that was actually pretty interesting. Um, have you ever tried to teach or explain what a TikTok is to your grandparent? No. That's like trying to teach a foreign language to a penguin. That one. You didn't. I don't, I'll tell you this, I don't disagree with you, right? That's why I'm saying it. And that's why you're booked. I mean, that's why you get on this show, because we are looking for different points of view. So, uh, I was also, I'll continue, I guess. I was recently, um, had a visit with a doctor, and I, uh, nothing huge, nothing huge, just a typical checkup procedure. And, um, the nurse was funny, she, uh, she asked me if I had any allergies, and I said, uh, yeah, I'm allergic to mornings, I'm allergic to small talk, and I'm allergic to responsibilities. But of course she meant medical uh, allergies, so pollen. Or, uh, you're using it in a more of a colloquial way, um, which is disingenuous. I, the joke is only halfway done. Okay, keep going. Uh, and the, the nurse was very funny. Uh, she said, oh, not a morning person, are you? And I said, no, I'm not a morning person. No one is a morning person. <laughs> if you were a morning person, you'd be a rooster. Well, I'm not a morning person because I do the clubs, and uh, let's just say I have a, more of a Hollywood lifestyle. Um, but, you know, if you look, if you care about this shit, you know that... Um, a lot of people find that there's more productivity happening in the morning, and uh, people that do get up earlier, I'm not saying this is necessarily the case for everybody, but there, there's fair enough, you know, there's good science out there that suggests that uh, getting up early, you know, there's these fucking people, Tom Cruise or whoever, who gets up at four in the fucking morning to work out. I mean, who are these people, right? But, but there is something to be said about getting up early and um, getting a lot done. Yeah. Correct. That's exactly where where I was going with that. Well, you seem to be coming from the perspective that uh, it would be ridiculous to be a morning person, and uh, that's that's where you lost me. Okay. And I think you're going to find that you know if you're going to Pittsburgh with that shit. Yes. Anything else? Um. Dating? Oh, God. What? No, I'm, I'm with you. It's okay. nuts out there. Okay, so let's agree. It's crazy. Let's First of all, you can't date You can't date anymore because as soon as you, you know, say somebody has pretty eyes or uh, you like the way they, uh, you know, you like their figure or something, suddenly you get canceled and the fucking Me Too mob comes after you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Uh, I'll continue. Dating is honestly like a game of Russian roulette. You never know if the person you're going out with is going to be a total bore or the love of your life. That's just the first one. You can give feedback on that. I'm waiting uh, for, for this to go anywhere. Okay. Yeah, uh, so you're not going to punch that one up? I'm on the record. I think dating is a big mistake. If you're, I think if you're lucky to find a partner... Before Me Too, then God bless you. But now, what's the fucking point? So you're single? 
no. Okay. Um, yeah, honestly, um, dating is like a game of musical chairs. I thought you said it was a game of uh, Russian roulette. Similar. Yeah, there's two different jokes. Okay. Dating, dating so is, which one are you going to use? I'm trying both right now, and I would like assistance if you... I'm is not, the mustache a joke? Mustaches have been around. For, I know, but look at the, the hair and the mustache. You're acting like uh, with the ironic shirts and <laughs> and the funny shoes, and you think that uh, that you, you you're 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 playing a part. You're playing a character in 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 your life in life. I don't know. I mean, listen. Go down to uh, downtown uh, L.A. Walk around. Uh, w where men like you might work uh, and see how many of them have mustaches. Men like me. Okay, so let me just continue with this because I honestly am asking for your help here. Okay. Um, dating in... It's 2023, it's not 1973. That's just a comment about live in your age. Don't live in the past. Don't act like you're, uh, you know, this retro scene is bumming everybody out. Okay. Dating in California or Cali, I could we could punch that up later. It's honestly, don't even get me started on dating in California. It's like a game of musical chairs, except when the music stops, no one wins. Everyone's just left standing there awkwardly. And then yeah, so it's either that or Russian roulette, and that's what I'm asking you. Well, you know, Russian stuff is dicey. Uh, there's, um, your generation once, uh, w has been told and, uh, instructed to find the Russian is the, uh, Russians are the enemy. I don't think they are. I think it's way more complicated than that. I think that you're throwing a grenade into the room by just bringing it up. And if you want to do that and at the same time, not talk about the issue and ignore it, then that's a cowardly act. So if you want my honest opinion, I guess. I don't think it's a stronger joke, but I'd go musical chairs. Thank you. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna we have time that. for one more. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to go into the Los Angeles dating scene. So more dating stuff. Well, I, I feel like you were mentioning something I'm interested in, which is doing a full hour. That's a milestone. So yes, I would like to increase that chunk. Uh, dating, okay, thank you. Um, so let's talk about the Los Angeles. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, let's talk. Fucking bullshit. Is this yours? Well, yeah, this is mine. Okay, let's talk about the Los Angeles dating scene. Online dating apps? You know it's bad when... Where did you put my lighter? I do. Okay, ready? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so... Online dating apps? You know it's bad when you're swiping through photos of people and you come across a photo of yourself. That's when you know it's time to delete the app. They have these crazy names, right? There's a Tinder, Bumble, you've heard of these. They sound scary. Tinder, Tinder sounds like fire. Ah! Bumble sounds like bees. Bzzz. It's like, hey apps, are you trying to help me fall in love? Or are you trying to remind me of danger and bad vibes? I don't go, I don't go near those fucking apps. Because they track data, uh, they they invade your uh, they they track data. They they ha they have they're basically a open window into all the info that you have on your phone. If you're dumb enough to have info on your phone, which I am not, but still, I keep things locked down. And I'm not the kind of guy that needs an app like that anyway, because I've got the old fashioned in my day, the old fashioned way. We didn't have Tinder. We didn't have whatever. We had a little thing called Black Book. 
And what that was, was a list of names and a list of numbers. And if I wanted to meet up with somebody, take somebody out to dinner, if I wanted to maybe take it to another level, I would pick up that book and I'd go through the book and I'd make a couple of calls. And nine times out of 10, I'd have myself a very pleasant evening. Okay. Well, listen, Jay, uh, I want to thank you for coming down to the compound and I wish you all the best. Uh, you want to pl- uh, promote anything or tell me anything about, uh, you've already mentioned you're going to be on the East Coast and where can people find, uh, find those dates? Yes, they are. The dates are... Don't tell me the dates. We can put the website out there and then people can find the dates, okay? I have to go. I have a guy coming over because we're extending uh, the, the, this walk-in closet we have up there. Uh, there's, uh, we're, we're, they have a room that we don't fucking need. So we're blasting through the, the, the back wall of the walk-in closet, which is not technically a walk-in closet. We've been acting like it was, uh, but then we're subdividing the room essentially, but I've got a contractor coming over now to take a look. So I have to split, but, uh, thanks for being here and I wish you all the best. Office hours. All right. Thanks for doing this, man. Let me know when you're... Um, well, let let Matt know when you're going to be near us here. Try to come down. And, uh, yeah, help yourself to uh, any of this, but take care. All right? All right.